Hey, what's going on there, folks? Welcome back here to a weekend. It is the Earth Master here, Saturday, April 20th, 2024, about 1.45 p.m. here, California time. Latest activity here on the globe shows a 3.0 around Turkey. Uh, just actually outside of Turkey, it looks like. And uh, there's another earthquake out here, it looks like, in California, a little one-pointer. Striking out there around, uh, looks like, the Clear Lake Volcanic Field. Of course, this is very typical here for this area. Uh, there's always, almost always earthquake activity out here. If you look at the last 30 days of movement, got close to 2,000 earthquakes out here. Now, this is a hydrothermal field, and there's a whole process involved uh, that uh, takes place out here with many of these hydrothermal plants by utilizing the heated areas below to produce energy. Uh, but also at the same time, there's a, a whole bunch of earthquake activity being produced during the operations. All right, looking out and about here across the West Coast. Got anything new popping off out here? Well, we did see a couple different swarms out here last night. Let's see if we got anything uh, new this morning. Looks like uh, a handful of earthquakes after midnight, 2.9 here in the mix, northwest of Tonopah, Nevada. Also uh, one out around the Mina, Nevada area as well. This is um, around the, uh, let's see, are we at the Candelaria Hills or is this south of there? I think, yeah, this is the uh, Candelaria Hills area. Uh, this region seen a six-pointer back in 2019, if I remember correct. Uh, seen a, a few months of aftershock activity as well. Looks like some strain building out here across this area with the ongoing movement today. A couple earthquakes striking out there. And that's just one area. We've seen a swarm here around the northern edge of the Death Valley Fault Zone that turns into the Fish Lake Valley Fault Zone, the Cucamonga section. Seen a, a decent earthquake swarm as well yesterday, and it looks like that's lingering into today. Also, another separate swarm here northwest of Las Vegas. Uh, about 33, er well, let's zoom in a little bit closer. About 30 earthquakes or so in this swarm as well. The majority from yesterday, but also seen some activity today. Uh, and also down here across the coast, uh, Coso a Volcanic Range, a little separate swarm going on. So we have uh, different areas of swarming going on out here, specifically in this region where it appears that uh, plate stress is high. And um, still kind of watching that. We haven't really seen anything major going on. In fact, if we remove all of the 2.5 and above, that only leaves that one earthquake there around mine in Nevada. So... A lot of smaller earthquake activity, but we cannot discredit what's going on out here. And that's a potential uh, of stress being produced out here across and, uh, well, a ways away from the plate boundary. Of course, the uh, North American and the Pacific plate boundary, better known as the San Andreas Fault, sits right here. That area, fairly quiet for now. There's not a whole lot of movement specifically on it, and that's a good sign. But uh, still, well overdue here for a big one. This is the area, the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault. It's going to see an 8.1 magnitude earthquake one day. That will uh, definitely shape uh, the land out here and uh, have a lot of negative consequences there across uh, many of the populated areas. That's uh, inevitable. That's going to happen. Just a matter of when. Yellowstone National Park, nothing showing up here on the map, but I do want to double check because we had a couple earthquakes coming in overnight, looks like. Uh, see if you guys can spot it. You guys see the earthquakes? Well, it's going to be here in Maple Creek, Holmes Hill. It's going to be this little separate section here of about four earthquakes, uh, very small earthquakes. Those are probably uh, about a 1.5 to 1.7 or so. They did show up across a few other seismograph stations locally, but not uh, across the entire park. So that tells me right there that uh, more than likely under the 2.0 threshold, nothing being reported from the USGS map. That is because it's a weekend. They'll probably get to that Monday morning once they review the earthquakes. Texas area, seeing quite a bit of earthquake activity out here in the oil fields and around the Permian Basin area where... A lot of oil fields are, thousands upon thousands of them. Also quite a few oil fields out here outside of the Falls City area of Texas. This region is littered with wastewater disposal ponds and lots of these oil pumping operation pads. And that's where we're uh, looking at a little bit of earthquake activity today. Oklahoma as well, handful of smaller quakes there. 
from uh, this morning time period, it looks like. New Madrid seismic zone. Got one little earthquake late last night, a little two-pointer out here in the Marston, Missouri area. And far as the East Coast goes, uh, looks like New Jersey getting uh, some further aftershock activity. Uh, looks like most of this, though, from yesterday. So how's this for a total tally, excluding that one uh, Pennsylvania earthquake there from yesterday? That was a 2.4. I guess that was felt pretty broadly over there across that area for a very small quake. Um, we got about 104 earthquakes. That's a pretty decent tally. Uh, of earthquakes there in an odd region, right? We don't get a lot of earthquake activity out here. Of course, that all stems from the 4.8 that struck back on the 5th of April. So, um, you know, since then, obviously, we're seeing some aftershock activity, including a 3.7. I believe that 3.7 is going to be the largest aftershock sequence there. Um, and, of course, these multitudes are going down. There's always, you know, always the potential out here of seeing something bigger in the region. Historically, there's been larger quakes out here uh, around the New York area and just northward. This swarming activity actually sits uh, just on the edge of uh, the major hazard zone out here. So when I say there's always a potential of larger scale movement, you know, this could be some signs here of, um, you know, the strain, specifically the strain building up regionally as a whole. So uh, got to watch that. Definitely, uh, you know, histor uh, history tells us that large quakes can take place out here. Not as often as, say, California, but even here in California, we really haven't had any large earthquakes out here. Uh, you know, occasionally a four, or maybe a five, but it, it's hit and miss. A the last decent earthquake activity was around the Ridgecrest area back in uh, 2019. But, uh, yeah, we've been living in somewhat quiet times out here across the West Coast. All right, moving on here, see what else we got. Uh, Middle America Trench, seeing a pancake of earthquake activity out here, stacking upon each other. Quite a few threes and fours. South America region, some fours, threes, and twos. The magic numbers out there, it looks like. And in the Hawaii area, out in the middle of it all, shows uh, a handful of earthquakes, including some uh, movement up here across the Kilauea Volcano. Nothing uh, of abnormal activity yet. Just seeing a handful of earthquakes here around the southeastern rift zone or starting to get towards the southeast rift zone. Most of the movement here recently in the last couple of weeks or so has been positioned off here towards the southwest rift zone from the Kilauea volcano and a lot of deeper activity underneath the Pahala area. So we'll continue to watch that. Definitely, uh, you know, things are getting geared up here. For the next eruption, it may be a little while. I don't see any signs right now of any imminent eruption, but, uh, you know, things got to take place. They got to come and go and uh, got to recharge, so to speak, to get things going. The Curl Kamachaka. What do we got out here? A couple earthquakes from yesterday, a 4.8 and a 4.8. Um, this area definitely primed for some mega scale movement, mega scale earthquake activity, I should say. We haven't seen any major movement up here in quite a while. Uh, there's some swarming going on there around the Philippines southward. There's that super deep earthquake from yesterday in the Mariana Trench 5.0. Doesn't look like we've seen anything upstream yet. Uh, kind of surprised to see nothing here on the map yet. Uh, because normally when we see this deeper earthquake activity, it tends to strain the subduction zone level upstream. Uh, but that's not taking place yet. Some deeper activity back building here across the Tonga Trench once again. And... Looks like New Zealand's seen a 3.1 down there across the area. Not showing up here on the USGS map, of course, but uh, four-pointer along the Kermadec Trench, it looks like as well. Still lacking earthquake activity here in this seismic gap zone. Uh, you know, this bouncing back and forth between deep and shallower earthquake activity. Skipping over this region because this is where a lot of the mo momentum and the strain tends to build along this plate boundary. Um, and right now, it's just kind of, we're seeing earthquake activity skipping over this. But obviously, we're getting some strain in that region. The general plate movement here across the area tells us that this would be the area to watch. With all the arrows, right, pointing towards the northwest. When we see deeper activity out here, that tends to put the strain here across this region. Of the Indonesia Islands area and Papua New Guinea region. So we'll continue to watch that. 
the Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet. Not a whole lot going on out there. One little earthquake way up on the top of the globe. And uh, there's your Mediterranean activity today. And Middle East seeing a handful of earthquakes as well. So uh, really not a whole lot of big time movement in the last 24 hours. In fact, uh, so far today, the largest one's going to be a 4.9 earthquake along the Middle America Trench here, about 111 kilometers deep. So uh, not a big earthquake, but that's deep here into the trench zone, the subduction zone. And it does look like things are, um, you know, starting to strain there a little bit across the Middle America Trench area. All right, uh, what else we got here? Anything going on in Iceland? Let's go see what's going on here across the Iceland area. Make sure I turn off the bells. If I didn't, it'd probably be a little bit too late, right? This far into the update. Uh, we got about 28 earthquakes out here across the rift zones of the Iceland region. Not a whole lot going on. Uh, around the Grindavik area where our current ongoing activity is taking place. Only a handful of earthquakes. Really not seeing anything of abnormal activity. And we'll go check out the live from Iceland site for a visual perspective. And that visual perspective is, well, it's <laughs> blocked out again. Not seeing a lot of uh, activity at all. Looks like some weather going on up there. The elements of the outside world here uh, interfering with our view of the eruption. But I assume that it is still continuing. Uh, let's check out the latest activity here from the Icelandic Met Office. Normally they don't do an update on the weekend. So this is still from yesterday. They were just mentioning about the current uh, inflation rates there across the Savart Singhi area, how we're still rising. This is a current uh, graph here showing even with this continuous eruption going on there at the surface in that large active crater that we've seen, we're still getting inflation going on. So that tells us that we could see a new eruption happening soon. The amount of volume, the volume of magma below has accumulated quite a bit, even with this ongoing vent that is uh you know you would think it would be relieving the inflation below but it's not so we could see something you know gear up uh, around the area uh, for another eruption a, a separate a second eruption somewhere we'll have to watch that pretty closely all right uh, space weather activity anything going on out in outer space or at least on our star our sun still quite high on the sfi and the solar sunspot number 243 and 213 for the index, um, looking at a decent chance still of some X flare probability at 20%. Now, let's take a look here at these sunspots. They are pretty close. Well, uh, you know, almost center disk here of the sun, almost directly, pretty much directly facing the Earth with the Earth Sun plane. Um, but it won't be for much longer. Here in a couple days, this is going to be scooting along. Now, we do have a couple sunspots in here that are showing dynamic growth. But we haven't really seen any large flaring taking place here uh, in the last 24 hours. But this is about the only active region here to watch for some stronger flaring. I, I say if it's going to do it, it better do it soon because it's going to be, uh, you know, facing away from Earth here soon. Uh, a little bit of development up here on the northern sunspot. I know this has been uh, kind of separating here, but it looks like we're starting to get some back building structure here features on this sunspot which we'll, we'll keep an eye on as well but the main feature main area the main cluster of sunspots right there in that large group that uh, is currently facing the earth for now and it's a dandy of a uh, sunspot complex quite a bit all right no auroras in the forecast um, that doesn't mean there's not any uh, unexpected solar stream events um, there's a little bit of aurora activity currently taking place right now up into uh, Greenland and Iceland area. Not really calling for much, though. I mean, just a little bit of unsettled conditions over the next couple nights. Storm Prediction Center, not a whole lot of severe weather, at least for the next couple days. We're looking at potential flood risk down here across this area of Texas. They're expecting quite a bit of rainfall coming in uh, this weekend. Um, but the severe weather looks to be taking place next week. We're looking at day six and day seven here, right, for severe potential. This is going to be Thursday, um, Thursday into Friday, 
early Friday, and then this covers Friday to Saturday. So uh, these days right here, this is a ways out, but they're already calling for a 15% chance for severe potential. Um, roughly around the western Oklahoma area, northern Texas into Kansas on Thursday into Friday, and then scooting east a little bit to the northeast. Uh, but still covering a good portion of Oklahoma down here uh, as we head into Friday and Saturday. So we'll keep an eye on that. That's definitely definitely a ways out, but they're picking up on something. And it's going to be this low pressure system right here. This is next week as we head Thursday into Friday. There's going to be a decent low pressure, a return of sufficient Gulf moisture coming into the area. And of course, the dynamics right there will cr uh, produce the, the convection needed for severe potential. There it is on uh, Thursday night into Friday. It doesn't look like a lot as far as rainfall accumulation, but I think this is going to be a uh, potential big-time hail or large hail uh, possible with this setup. But we can't rule out the tornado potential as well. And then as we head into next weekend, uh, things look to, um, yeah, well, maybe almost a repeat of what happened there prior to the next weekend prior uh, you know back on, uh, next week on thursday and friday but that's a ways out i don't want to get too far out there but uh look at all that moisture that's going to be out here in this region there's going to be a lot and the west coast out there looks like may may get a little bit of rainfall as well and of course what goes on out here does have an effect on the weather out in the great plains right makes sense so uh it looks to be an active uh, remaining April and uh, at least a good portion of May shows uh, some activity out here as well for severe weather potential. All right, uh, I'm trying to think what else here. We got anything going on in uh, the uh, outer space world as far as asteroid approaches go? This is the uh, next five asteroid approaches in terms of closeness and proximity to the Earth. It looks like uh, today we've got a 48 foot house side house size asteroid um recently discovered passing by at about uh oh, half a million miles away so that's a, a safe distance all other asteroids out here this is a pretty large one 280 feet in diameter asteroid that's a that's a decent one but that's uh, even further at four million miles away so nothing of interest for now but notice all these new asteroids being discovered all right, um, anything else going on here, folks? Seismograph stations are looking pretty quiet and calm. But uh, again, don't let your guard down. Stay safe out there. Uh, and of course, always make sure you have some type of plan out here. These earthquakes obviously can strike anywhere at any time. Um, you know, and here in the States, we have numerous areas aside from the West Coast that are in the hazard zone for large earthquake potential. All across the New Madrid seismic zone, a lot of activity around the Wichita Mountains in Oklahoma, uh, down in the South Carolina area, Appalachia Mountains up in the Northeast. You know, it could happen pretty much anywhere. So a lot of these areas have not seen any large earthquake activity in quite a while. So obviously hundreds of years of accumulated slip rate and strain are building up for the next earthquake out here. So we just got to be on guard for that. All right, folks, have a good day. Enjoy your Saturday. It's a, uh, oh goodness, it's 81 degrees out here, here in California right now, two o'clock in the afternoon. It's supposed to be about 85 or so. So I'm going to go outside, get some sun, and work on the garden a little bit. Have a good day, folks. We'll catch you guys back out here for the Saturday night update. Stay safe.